In module two, we're going to be learning about lapis lazuli, uh, which forms the blue basis of the pigment ultramarine. So uh, lapis lazuli, in fact, is a rock that is made up of a cluster of minerals that co-occur or that form together under the same conditions. The blue mineral is the one that we're really interested in in terms of the creation of blue pigments and that one is uh, called lazurite. Lazurite is a somewhat complex sodium calcium aluminum silicate sulfide uh, the lazurite will be found associated with pyrite, which is an iron sulfide, and uh, white calcite, which is a calcium carbonate. These three minerals commonly grow together under uh, metamorphic conditions that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, it's also worth noting that very often the what we refer to as lazurite in lapis lazuli is actually the mineral hawane, which is a very closely related mineral, has the exact same chemical composition as the lazurite does, except instead of containing sulfur, pure sulfur, sulfide, it contains sulfate. Um, so in order to process a rock, lapis lazuli, containing three different minerals, only one of which we are interested in for uh, the purposes of making our blue pigment, the first thing we would do is break down the blue mineral into chips as we see here. And then those chips could go into a mortar and pestle as seen here and ground in order to make a blue powder evidence of which you can see here. And, and here's here. some that we've made. Uh, once it is very, very purified, you can get a really brilliant, intense blue uh, from lapis lazuli. And uh, this is as, as close as you can get to the pure lazurite mineral. And this is, some, this is a process that requires two weeks of, of hard work um, and you only get a yield that represents about two to four percent of the actual stone by volume. So this is uh, part of the reason that this was such an expensive uh, pigment in uh, the ancient world and well into the early modern period. It wasn't until the 19th century that an inexpensive alternative was found that could be created in a laboratory. Um, and there are particular qualities that we'll explore in this unit uh, that make uh, this ultramarine blue pigment uh, so precious and so prized. Uh, there was a great deal of meaning associated with the blue, and the rocks themselves were, were also used, uh, particularly in the ancient world, um, by, in the ancient Near East and uh, by the Romans, um, perhaps also by the Greeks for small-scale sculptures um, and pieces of jewelry, for example. Um, and the, the stone was rare enough, it had to be uh, mined in fairly remote locations, primarily in present-day Afghanistan, where it's still being mined. Um, and so the, the brilliant color and the rarity also made it uh, quite, quite expensive and, and, and highly valued. Uh, so we'll be exploring the how it was used both as a pigment and also as a sculpture medium uh, in the art portion of this unit.